Amen. Amen. Psalm 92, verses 1 and 2. I love how it starts. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. Let's say that together. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High. And then verse 2 says, to show forth your loving kindness in the morning. Now I want you to think about that. That is great, great wisdom in how to start our day. If when you wake up in the morning, if you could lift your hands to the Lord and say, Lord, great is your faithfulness. Your mercies are brand new every morning. Lord, I just want to thank you for your love for me. Because, Lord, I know if you love me, you're going to take care of me. If you love me, you're going to provide for me. Lord, I ask you to go before me and go with me. Put the angel of the Lord round about me to deliver me from all evil and harm and danger, Lord. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on. If we acknowledge the Lord in the morning, show forth your loving kindness in the morning. And then before you go to bed at night, pause and say, Lord, I just want to thank you that you kept me through another day. Come on, somebody. How many know he's faithful? I said he's faithful. Amen. Lord, I just want to thank you that you kept me and my family, my loved ones through another day. Someone said, how you doing? I'm still here. Come on. I'm still here. The enemy did his best to try to take you out, but thank God the weapons that were formed, they did not prosper. Come on, somebody. The weapons that were formed, they did not come to pass. I'm still here, and I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness every night. There are multiple benefits for being thankful. But you know what? It's not always easy to stay positive and to stay thankful. We live in a very negative world, don't we? Isaiah 60 says, darkness covers the earth and gross darkness all the people. And sometimes, you know, when you listen to the news, sometimes when you talk to people, I'll tell you, it doesn't take long for those negative emotions just to become a part of you. And you really have to be proactive. You really have to be aggressive. 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9 says that Satan goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But I love verse 9. It says, resist him. Somebody shout, resist him. Resist. Resist. Sometimes you got to shake it off. And I mean, sometimes that devil, he's persistent. You got to shake and keep on shaking. Amen. It says, resist him steadfastly in the faith. Resist him steadfastly in the faith because if we get off in the flesh here's what Paul said about our flesh he said in my flesh there dwells no good thing there's no good thing in our flesh come on we got to get out of the flesh and we got to get over into the Spirit. we got to learn to live in the Spirit. That's why I love Jude 20. It says, Beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith 
by praying in the Holy Ghost. How many of you thank God for your prayer language? Amen. We all need to encourage ourselves in the Lord. We need to encourage one another, but sometimes there's nobody there to encourage you, and you got to encourage yourself. Sometimes the enemy will wake you up in the middle of the night and try to bombard you with negative thoughts and thoughts of fear, and sometimes on your bed, you got to shout to the Lord. The Bible says in Psalm 147, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God. I mean, no, there's victory in a shout. When I clap my hands, I like to picture the devil's head between my hands, and then I give God a good clap. Come on, give God a good clap offering with the devil between your hands. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. In, in, in 1 Samuel 30, David and his men, they're out on, in the battle, and they come home to Ziglag. And we've got to remember, Ziglag was a city that was given to David as his inheritance. And he comes home to find Ziglag burned to the ground. It would be like the enemy just came and tried to steal and burn your inheritance right out from under you. And then they kidnapped David's family and all the men's families. And David's men got so upset at him, they wanted to stone him to death. But 1 Samuel 30, verse 5 or 6 says, David encouraged himself. Come on, somebody. You got to encourage yourself in the Lord. Because if you don't, if you get out of the Spirit and you slide into the flesh, the enemy will do his best to try to discourage you, disappoint you, depress you, and do whatever he can to keep you bound up. But thank God, Jesus came to set the captive free. Amen? My first point is, I'm going to just call it this. We all need an attitude of appreciation. We all, we all fight negative emotions. We all do. You know, I had three different times this week. I just received such disappointing news. And it was like one would have been enough. Then when it came again, then when it came a third time last night, I thought, Lord, I'm only human. How much more can you take? Thank God he's the glory and the lifter of our heads. Amen. I said he's the glory and the lifter of our heads. Amen. And that is why we need the Holy Spirit to rest upon us. In Isaiah 61, and this is the, the verse, the, the verses in the New Testament in Luke 4, when Jesus went to the synagogue and he was called upon to read, the Bible says he found the book of Isaiah. <clears throat> and he read Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord is now upon me because the Lord has anointed me. Thank God for the anointing. The word Jesus Christ, the word Christos, means the anointed one. So if you have invited Jesus Christ, Christos, into your heart, I'm here to tell you, you're anointed. Somebody shout, I'm anointed. And Isaiah 10, 27 says, the anointing will break and destroy the yoke. I pray whatever is on us that is not of God is broken off of us 
because the Spirit of the Lord is upon you because he has anointed you. He has anointed you to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent you to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to preach the acceptable year. Now that word acceptable year means the favorable year of the Lord. I prophesy you are going out of 2014 with a high hand of God's favor. I prophesy this is a favorable, I don't care what it's been up till now, I decree between now and December 31st at midnight, you are going out with a high hand of God's favor. Hallelujah. To preach the favorable year of the Lord the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to appoint to those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise, the mantle of praise for the spirit of heaviness, so that you might be called the trees of righteousness the planning of the Lord so that he might be glorified. God calls you and I trees, cedars of Lebanon, straight and tall. John 15, 16, Jesus said, you haven't chosen me, I've chosen you. I've ordained you that you should go and bring forth much fruit, Micah. And then he says, so that your fruit might remain. Come on, how many of you want lasting fruit? So that when we stand before the Lord, we hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. That's what I want to hear. That's what I, I'm going to be right behind you. So the Lord better say that over you too. Come on, somebody. Because when brother cup gets blessed, sister saucer gets the overflow. Amen. Come on that you might be called a tree of righteousness, bearing much fruit for the Lord, and that your fruit would remain. We need to fight off heaviness and depression. We do. And I realize it's, it's not always easy to do. I know some of you, you're disappointed because of one of your children. Some of you are disappointed because of what you're fighting in your health, in your body. Some of you are disappointed because of what you're going through in your finances or in your job or your work. I know it's not easy. But you know what? We can either wear an emotional garment or we can wear a spiritual garment. And I just want to encourage you this morning. And I say this with all the grace and all the tenderness and love that is in my heart for you. If you're wearing a garment of heaviness today, why don't you join me and take it off and leave it at the altar? If you're carrying a disappointment in your heart. I know I am. I want to leave it. I want to leave that garment at the altar today. And I want to put on. The word put on means to be endued with, to be clothed with a garment of praise. And if we put on, but sometimes, you know, you, you can't wear two coats. You got to take off one garment, the emotional garment, so you can put on the spiritual garment. Put on the garment of praise. And I believe one of the keys to putting off heaviness and depression and 
loneliness and fear and disappointment is we got to be thankful. You know, Philippians 4, 6 says, in everything, it says, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious about nothing, but in everything, with prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. I mean, sometimes you need to thank the Lord in faith for something even before you see it. You need to say, Lord, I thank you for my turnaround. Lord, I thank you for my breakthrough. Lord, I thank you for reconciling my children back to me. Lord, I thank you for my healing. And if the Lord's up in heaven and he hears you praying like that, he's going to say to his angels, you better get down there quick with their answer because they're already thanking me before they see it. How many know we go not by what we see because what we see is only temporary? But thank God we go by what we don't see because what we don't see, that is what's eternal. You know, Hebrews 13, 15 says we need to give God the sacrifice of praise. You know what a sacrifice is? That means sometimes, Lord, I don't feel like praising you. Lord, my hands are heavy today. Lord, my heart is heavy today. Lord, I just want to stay under the covers. Lord, I just want to pull down the blinds today. Come on, be honest. I take authority over a lying spirit. Come on. But Lord, here's what it says. We got to offer to God the sacrifice of praise. And then God tells us exactly what the sacrifice of praise is in Hebrews 13, 15. He says, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to the Lord. So you got to start just finding something that you're thankful for. You could start with this. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Come on. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me your great salvation so rich and free just thank thank you for your salvation i mean thank god you're saved come on amen amen start there how many of you thank god you don't live in buffalo come on (laughs) or you don't live in erie come on it's it's eerie to live in erie you know that it really is. Woo, six feet of snow. And then they were calling for another 32 inches. And praise God, we live in the berg. Amen? Amen. Well, if you thank God, the Steelers aren't going to lose today. Amen? I guarantee it. I prophesy the Steelers will not lose today. I promise you that. You can take it to the bank. I promise you, you can thank God for that. (laughs) We need to stay in the spirit. We need to to remain thankful. We need to shed the garment of emotion and put on the garment, the spiritual garment of praise thanksgiving, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to the Lord. More, I know this Thursday is Thanksgiving, but how many know Thanksgiving needs to be more than just one day? Thanksgiving needs to be a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. We must choose to live it out 
365 days a year. But before we can put it on, sometimes we got to take it off. We got to shake it off. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, you know it well. The Apostle Paul writes, in everything. He doesn't say for everything. He says, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now everything that's happening to you right now is not the will of God. There's a lot of stuff that's going on in our life that's the will of the enemy. But it's the will of God that while you're in it, not when it's over, not after it changes, not after you're already delivered. How many know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, while they were still in the furnace, they said, we will not bow to your God. We're going to trust and serve our God. Even while they were still in the furnace, and sometimes while we're still in the fire, we have to say, Lord, in everything, I'm going to give you the sacrifice of praise. I don't know what your quote in. You have to fill in that blank. But I do know the Lord encourages us to be thankful. I know he encourages us to not be ruled by our emotions but to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let me ask you this morning, what garment are you wearing? If you're wearing a garment that the Lord has not clothed you with, I invite you humbly today to come and take it off and leave it at the altar. Let's lay it down and let's put on the sacrifice of praise. Let's put on a thankful heart and lips. Luke 6.45 says, A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, brings forth evil. And then it says this, For out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. So if you are struggling to be thankful or if you are being ruled by your emotions and they're not godly rather than by your spirit, how many of you know you may need to do a heart check? Because out of the abundance of your heart, you may need to be honest with God. David prayed in Psalm 139 verses 23 and 24. He said, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, Lord, and if there's any wicked thing in me. How many of you give the Lord permission that if there's anything in your heart, any bitterness, if you're harboring an offense, if you're carrying a disappointment over someone or what somebody's done to you or not done for you, if you're harboring unforgiveness, do a heart check today. Because out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth is going to speak. And if your heart is wounded, how many of you know hurting people hurt people? If you're wounded, you're going to be negative. You're going to have a hard time being thankful. You're going to have a hard time praising God. Let me ask you honestly, what is robbing you of an attitude of appreciation? What's robbing you? Let's not be ignorant of Satan's devices. And then let's go to the 100th Psalm together. Psalm 100 says, Make a joyful noise, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. He has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And then he says this in verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving 
and into his courts with praise. And be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. Somebody say, the Lord is good. Come on, say it one more time. The Lord is good. Come on, shout it one more time. Lord, you're good. You're good, Lord. And your mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. I want you to see two gates. On the other side of those gates is God's presence. And there's only one way to get in. You come to the gate, and you got to give the password. You know what the password is? It's be thankful. Lord, I give you thanks. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I give you thanks, for you are good. Lord, I thank you that you're faithful. Come on, somebody give God thanks. Lord, I thank you today for my salvation. I thank you that I have a sound mind. I thank you for my family, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you woke me up this morning. Come on, somebody. And as you are thankful, the gates will open and usher you and me into his very presence. God inhabits. It's where he lives. How many of you want to live in the presence of God? Amen. Number two, that's the atmosphere changer. That's, that changes the atmosphere. Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. You and I got to stop speaking negatively. We got to stop speaking words of death. We have to stop complaining. You got to stop speaking about your situation out of your emotions. Because it says, the end of verse 18, or the end of verse 21, those who love it shall eat the fruit of it. See, if you love words of death, you're going to eat the fruit of those words. But thank God if we love life. Come on, I said if you love life. Come on, you and I got to speak blessing. Amen? So why people ask you, how you doing? I say, I'm still here. Come on, so I said, I'm still here. Come on. I said, I'm still here. Praise God. The enemy tried his best, but it didn't work. We're still here, Sue. Thank God we're still here. Amen. It's an atmosphere changer. And then let's go to Esther chapter 6. If you remember in the book of Esther, Haman, an evil man, he plotted a plan to annihilate all the Jewish people. He even built gallows because he wanted Mordecai, who was a Jew, to hang on those gallows. And Mordecai goes to Esther and says, Esther, you're in the king's court. You're in the inner circle. You need to go before the king. And Esther said, yeah, but if he doesn't extend the royal scepter and invite me, extend an invitation for me to come, it's instant death for anyone that goes before the king unannounced. He said, yeah, but if you don't go, all of the Jews might become annihilated. And he said, Esther, maybe the Lord brought you into the kingdom for such a time as this. And so she called a three-day fast, and she said, I'm going to go, and you know what? If I perish, I perish. And she went before the king. He extended the royal scepter, and he said, whatever you desire, I'll do it. She said, well, I, I want you to hold a banquet. And at the banquet, she explained to King Ahasuerus, she said, King Haman has plotted a deceiving plan. How many of you know the devil is a deceiver? 
to annihilate all the Jews. And she said, I'm a Jew. Mordecai's a Jew. And, and, and King Ahasuerus, he already signed a king's edict to put this to pass. But she exposed the devil. And it says in Esther chapter 6 and verse 1, on that night the king couldn't sleep. So he called his servant to bring the book of records. And they were read before the king and he found out that Mordecai had, had, had exposed two of the king's eunuchs, the keepers of the door who tried to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. And so the king says in verse 3, what honor or dignity has been done to Mordecai for this? He saved my life. And the king's servant said, Lord, nothing's been done. And so the king says, well, who's out in the court? And it just so happened that Haman was out in the outer court. So the king says, tell him to come in. And the king says to Haman, he says, Haman, let me ask you something. What would you do to honor somebody who was a great, great blessing to the king, but the king has not done anything to honor him? What would you do, Haman? And Haman thought, oh, he's talking about me. How many know the devil always overplays his hand? I said the devil always overplays his hand. And Haman said, well, I'll tell you what I would do, king. I would get out the king's royal robes, and I would get out the king's horse, and I would get out the king's crown, and I would put the king's royal robes on this man. I'd put a crown on his head. I would put him on a horse, and I would walk him throughout the city and acknowledge him with a spirit of honor. And King Ahasuerus says to Haman, that's a great idea. Would you go get my royal robes and go get my horse and go do that to Mordecai? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Amen. And Haman was furious. He was humiliated. He hated Mordecai. He wanted Mordecai to hang on the gallows. But God, come on, there's still a turnaround anointing in here from last week. God will turn what Satan meant for evil, and he'll turn it around for good. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And my third point is this. We, this is a great time of year, can activate the spirit of honor. Who has been a blessing to you? Who in your life has God used to encourage you, to bless you, to help you, to minister to you. I want to give you some homework. Is that all right? This week, I'd like you to think about, pray about somebody that the Lord has used to be a blessing to you. Maybe for some of you, some of those people are already in heaven but there's others that are still alive. They're still around. I always say, you know what? Don't, don't wait till their funeral to stand over the casket and say how good they look. We need to acknowledge and activate the spirit of honor by writing them a letter, jotting them a note, giving them a call, maybe sending them a gift, doing something to just say, you know what, I want to thank you for being a blessing in my life. I want to thank you that the Lord's used you to, to be a blessing to me. Do it while you have the time to do it. Do it while they're still here
do it while you still have the opportunity to reach out. Someone said, it's nice to see you. I said, yeah, it's better to be seen than viewed. Amen? Who in your life can you activate a spirit of honor? Say, I just want you to know I'm thankful to the Lord for you. I'm thankful the Lord has used you to be a blessing in my life. That's your homework. Can I encourage you? Don't send him a text. Amen. Amen. Take a moment. Give him a call. Send him a note. Get him a gift. Bless him because they've been a blessing to you. Let's all stand up together.